Hi, this is Mr. Nazarian. Our lesson objective today, I can multiply mixed numbers by fractions or mixed numbers. Fifth grade standard, numbers and fractions, B6. Here we have a mixed number, 3 and 1 fifths, times a fraction, 3 fourths. The strategy that we're going to be um, using for this is something that you're very familiar with. We used it quite a bit um, in solving multiplying uh, multi-digit numbers earlier in the year. So we're going to use the same uh, strategy. It's uh, called the area model. Uh, also, some people have referred to it as uh, the box method. Um, it's a distributive property, but typically we've called it the area model. So this should look pretty familiar to you. So we have a uh, square here, or a rectangle, and um, all that we do when we are multiplying like, I don't know, 27 if, if we were multiplying 27 times 4 or something, we would we know that 27 is made up of 20 and 7, so we broke up those uh, place values, right? And put the 7 over here. Well, it's the same idea, except we're separating the whole number part of a mixed number and the fractional part of a mixed number. So now we have the 3 and 1 fifths. 3 is in this column, 1 fifths in this column, and then 3 fourths is over here. Okay. So now we're just going to uh, use the area model to um, multiply just as if we were uh, trying to find the area of this uh, rectangle, because that's, that's basically what we are doing. So we're going to multiply first 3, the length times width, this part of the length 3 times 3 fourths. So that is going to give me, remember that uh, when I'm multiplying uh, with a whole number, this 3, if it was written as a fraction, would be 3 over 1. So um, and again, when we're multiplying fractions, we just multiply across numerator times numerator, uh, denominator times denominator. So the numerators in this case are 3 and 3, so 3 times 3 is 9, and the denominators would be 4 and 1, so 4 times 1 is 4. So 9 fourths, um, and then we would multiply this part of the length, 1 fifth, times the width over here, 3 fourths. So 1 fifth times 3 fourths, again, we're multiplying across, so what would that give us in this part? of the rectangle, 3 fourths times 1 fifth. Okay, again, 3 times 1 is 3, and 4 times 5 is 20. So, now we know that the volume of this rectangle, the total amount is this amount and this amount, right? Well, we can't just add up uh, fourths and twentieths, right? We have to find a common denominator. Um, what is a multiple, the the lowest common multiple of 4 and 20. Okay, hopefully you uh, recognize that, well, 20 is a multiple of 4. Obviously, every number is a multiple of itself, so 20 is a multiple of 20, and uh, 20 is also a multiple of 4. So the 3 20ths, I'm going to leave the way it is. The 9 fourths, I'm going to change a 20th. I have to change this 4 to 20 by multiplying by 5, which means I have to multiply the numerator by 5 as well. So that's going to give me 45. 20ths, right? And then I'm just putting those together. So I've got the, move them over here so we can see this a little bit clearer. So I have 45 20ths plus 3 20ths, that's going to give me 48 20ths, would be, which would be what as a mixed number? That's right. So 20 goes into 48. One time is 20, two times is 40. That's pretty close to this. I'm not going to do it three times. That'd be way too much, right? That'd be 60. So it goes into it two whole times, which would be 40. And then the difference between 48 and 40 is 8. So it's going to be 2 and 8 twentieths. And I'm not going to worry about reducing now. We will cover that in another lesson. But um, if you wanted to reduce that, you could. Um, but 2 and 8 twentieths would work. Um, and when we're checking for reasonableness, it's reasonable because I have this factor, right, 3 and 1 fifths, and I'm multiplying it by a fraction that's less than 1. So any time that we're multiplying by a fraction that's less than 1, that means that this other factor here is going to get smaller, right? I'm reducing it because I'm saying I only want 3 fourths of this. I don't want one whole of it, right? If I multiply by 1, it would be 3 and 1 fifths. I want less than one whole of it, so the product should be less than this other factor here. So 2 and 8 twentieths checks out on that. That works. Now let's multiply a mixed number times a mixed number and see what that looks like. 
So again, we're going to use the area model, but it looks a slight bit different here, just because I'm um, I have two mixed numbers instead of a mixed number and a fraction. So it doesn't matter where I put these, but I'm going to divide this two and a half. I'm going to break it up into the whole part of the the whole number part of the mixed number and the fractional part of the mixed number. So I have two and one half, and then I'm going to multiply it by four and five six again, separating these parts out. Four times two equals what? Eight, whoops, eight, good job. And so that's going to be this little part here of the whole rectangle. Then I'm going to multiply across here four times the one half. That's going to give me four halves, right? Which I can just do in my head. What is four halves as a whole number or mixed number? That's right, it would be two, right? Four halves, and that makes sense. Half of four is two. Okay, so this part is going to give me an area of two. This part here, I'm going to multiply 5, 6 times 2, which would equal what? Would equal 10, 6, right? I'm just going to write as an improper fraction and leave it there for now. And then 1 half times 5, 6, which would equal what? It would equal 5 twelfths. Okay. So now, I know the area of this part, 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 but I want to know the area of the whole part because I want to know what 2 and 1 half times 4 and 5, 6 equals the whole problem, right? So 8 and 2 obviously is going to give me 10. Um, if you want to just separate those over here first, you can. I'm going to just do that here. And, whoops. Plus sign. And then here I've got 5, 6, or excuse me, 10, 6, and 5 twelfths. Um, what would be a the lowest common multiple of 6 and 12? Bam! It would be 12, right? 6 goes into 12, 12 goes into 12. So this um, 10 6 is going to equal how many twelfths? Okay, it's going to equal 20 twelfths because I'm going to multiply the 6 times 2, which means I multiply the 10 times 2. So it's going to give me 20 twelfths. I'm going to add those up. And that's going to give me 25 twelfths, which equals... What is a mixed number? What's 25 twelfths is a mixed number? It would be 2, right? Because 12 goes into 25. 2 times tw 2 groups of 12 would be 24. And then there'd be 1 left over, right? So we've got 2 and 1 twelfths. So we've got 8 plus 2 is 10, plus another 2 is 12 and 1 twelfth. So 12 and 1 twelfths is our final answer for that. This last one, sorry it's a little messy, I want you to go ahead and solve on your own. Go for it. Okay, so we've got 3 and 2 thirds times 2 and 3 fourths, and I'm just going to really quick move through this. So, actually, I'm going to move this this way. So, we, remember, broke up the 3 and 2 thirds into 3 on this side, 2 thirds here, and then 2 and 3 fourths, got the 2 and the 3 fourths down here multiplied across, so we got 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds, which is the same as 1 third. I'll get to this part in a minute. Um, 3 times 3 fourths is 9 fourths, which is a mixed number is 2 and 1 fourth. And then 3 fourths times 2 thirds is 6 twelfths. Um, so I was looking at 1 third, 1 fourth, 6 twelfths, I had to find a common denominator, and I know that 12 is common denominator of 3, 4, and 12, so I left the 6 twelfths the same. Um, I found equivalent fraction one fourth as three twelfths. So this right here, three and three four three times three fourths gave me two and three twelfths. And then over in this section, I changed the one and one third to one and four twelfths. And I just added those up. And that gave me nine and thirteen twelfths. Um, which this is a mixed number that has the fraction part as an improper fraction. That means I need to change this improper fraction to a mixed number. I know that thirteen twelfths is uh, 1 and 1 twelfth. So I took that one whole, put it over here, gave me 10, and then I have the 1 twelfth. So that should have been your final answer. All right, we're going to work more on that tomorrow. See you then.